and welcome to my studio. I'm Jessie and this is the Knit Up and Die podcast, episode 50, Knit Mania. As always, I'd like to start out by thanking my viewers, whether you're subscribed and have been watching me for episodes upon episodes, or if you're brand new, welcome, hello, thank you. Um, this is ultimately for you. If you have something you'd like to see, let me know. Reach out to me and I'll do my best to demonstrate it or discuss it for you. Um, I love you guys. <laughs> I have my list as always. Um, hello and thank you to Amy, Deborah, Sun, Nitty, uh, and always love goes out to David, Evie, Melissa, Betty Ann, Scott and John, Carolyn, Kate, Terry and Mitch, Nancy and Rachel. Love you guys. Thank you. I have been knitting. I have been knitting a lot. Um, really, really crazy knitting. Since I got back on my trip, I've really been kind of trying to settle back in and relax, and I haven't done any dyeing. I know my shop desperately needs yarn, uh, but I really just needed to come back to my center point. And what better way than to knit? <laughs> uh, I talked last week a little bit about things that were on my needles, and so there have been some updates. Uh, first and foremost, I finished something. Yay! I had been working from a sock blank. Here is the remainder of the sock blank. This was a test blank that I had done. Hi, I have a guest. One of the puppies just walked in. Hazy's gone. Out you go. Good girl. This had been a test sock blank that I had done. It was a full size sock blank. Um, but it had a couple bleeds on it that I wasn't happy with and I didn't want to sell that um, I, I really want my product to be perfect for you and I wasn't happy with the bleeds. So I opted to knit my first blank project and I did. And I made a pair of socks. Yay! <laughs> These are my Good Vibrations pattern. It's available on Ravelry. It's a simple multi-size pattern. It has four sizes. It does use knits, purls, slip stitches. There is picking up, it is a heel flap. Um, but I did this completely from the sock blank and I love it. These are my holiday socks. I think they are so pretty. The colors are so unexpected um, because this is knit back and forth and this is knit in the round. You don't really know how it's gonna land and it just comes out this really wild, variegated, pretty mess, if you will, uh, for lack of a better word, but I, I really enjoy it. I think they're really pretty, and I'm excited to wear them. It's, it's my little gift to myself is my Christmas socks. But I've been knitting other things. Um, I also dug back into my How to Eat an Elephant blanket, and I'm feeling really good about this. I had a lot of little scraps from other projects suddenly available to me because you know, I finished projects and I had ends. And so I was excited to incorporate the new colors in. And since I spoke to you guys last, I have put on six squares. I did, let's see if I can get all the ends out of the way here. I did these four here across the top. These two yarns were left over from my, um, Whew, what do I call this? My Madly Addicted to You cowl. I, I'm designing it. I haven't gotten to test knitters yet. I'm sorry. I'm taking my time. I need to be in my zen before I do that. When I get there, you'll hear from me. I knit two squares. <laughs> I also knit this. This had been from my Buy It shawl. And this was left over from another project I can't remember. And then I did two more squares on the next column. So I've got six done in the past, I actually did them in the past week. If I could keep this habit up, if I could get even just five a week done, I'd be making really good progress and this will be done at some point before I'm gone. <laughs> That's my biggest fear is that I won't finish it. And at the same time, it's such an undertaking because I, I'm ultimately aiming for a king size blanket. I, I know, I know, that's madness, but it's gonna be beautiful if I do it. So, how to eat an elephant blanket, I am progressing nicely. 
for those of you who are interested in my formula for how I'm doing this, it is on my Ravelry project page, How to Eat an Elephant Blanket. Or if you're not on Ravelry, just send me a direct message or email me and I will send you my notes. It's really just a formula. It's not a direct pattern per se. My formula does include how I do the black framing. Um, and certainly if black isn't your thing, if you're not looking for the real stained glass thing and you want to frame it with a different color, you do what you want to do. You make it your project. Um, but contact me if you want that information or pop on over to Ravelry. And yay! <laughs> what else is going on? Oh, excuse me one moment. I'm going to put the dogs out. Thank you. I'm back. Sorry about that. One visit from a dog is, hey, I'm curious what you're doing. Two visits from a dog are, hey, I need to go out. So <laughs> everybody's outside now. Um, knitting, knitting, knitting. Okay, so I started a new project for myself. Um, 2018, I think I talked about last episode, is going to be a year of the socks for me. I have a number of socks that I really need to replace, and so I'm kind of sock happy right now. And I started the Coexist Socks by Claire Ellen. It is a free pattern available on Ravelry, and it is fun, fun, fun. Well, the concept is fun. <laughs> the pattern is really interesting. Let me pull this out for you. This is coexist. For each section of the sock, you have four options. And she did this based on a number of different things. She did this based on, um, I'm trying to flip pages so I can speak intelligibly. She did the first section on science fiction. This had been a mystery knit along, if I remember correctly. The first section is science fiction, and you can choose motifs from Star Wars, Star Trek, Doctor Who, or Firefly. The next section is her fantasy section, and she did Narnia, Harry Potter, yeah, those are two words you can't say together, Narnia and Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, and Lord of the Rings. You have motifs from each of those to choose from. And you can mix and match if you want to do part of it Harry Potter and part of it Lord of the Rings. You do that, you do that. Um, then she does 80s movies. I'm not up to this section yet. It's going to be really hard for me to choose. She did Princess Bride, uh, Ghostbusters, Goonies, and Ferris Bueller's Day Off. All favorites. Um, and unfortunately, it's a heel flap, so in that case, I really have to choose one. But I can choose one per sock. So my socks don't have to match. I can do one heel flap on one and one heel flap on the other. Uh, then the next section she did was Vampires. And it was Vampire Diaries, Anne Rice, Twilight, or True Blood. And finally for the, is this the toe? Nope. Then for the foot, um, she did Literature, Sherlock, Jane Austen, Lewis Carroll, and William Shakespeare. Again, all favorites. And finally for the toe, she did Mysterious Mysteries. And we did uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, X-Files, Supernatural, or Fringe. Now for every one of the things that I just listed, she has different charts. And you pick the one that you're in love with and you work that chart. Whether you pick it because you love the, the show, the movie, whatever, or you pick it because you like that chart. And so there's... Try to do the math. How many pairs of socks can you make off of this pattern? If every option has four, and in some sections like the foot or the leg, you could do multiple. The limitless pattern. Um, I, I had heard about uh, Kate is doing a pair of these. Kate from Chain 344. She's been working on a pair for some time now. I'm not sure if she finished. She might have finished them. But I heard about it through her, and I decided to go and take a look and see what was this all about. And I got the pattern on Ravelry. Like I said, it's Free. and it's an extensive pattern. There's, I mean, there's a lot here because of all the charts. Um, it is charted. I don't see here where there's, no, there's no written instructions, so you do need to know how to read charts. It's free, people. It's free. Um, nothing here is difficult, and where it is like something, a new technique or something, she notes where you can find a video online. Brilliant. Anywho, so I started my first sock, and I started off, I did the Star Trek cuff, and I am working the Harry Potter leg. Harry Potter leg. 
I haven't decided which heel flap I'm going to do yet. I haven't, I haven't decided anything going forward. All I've decided is when I get to that section, I work a section, I do that. I have, like I said, I did the cuff and I have my first repeat of the leg done and I'm going to hold this up. Actually, I'm going to steal a sock blank here. One of the sock blockers will help me hold it up. It's dark, it's a dark blue, but hopefully you can sort of see what's going on here. And I'm knitting it on my nine inch uh, circular needles. They're size two, my gauge, it works with a two. But there's the pattern. And I'm loving it, I'm loving it. Now, mind you, I wasn't paying much attention when I chose this project. And I just had it in my head that I was gonna make fun socks. <laughs> I'm reading from charts. Some of the stitches are not readily memorizable. Uh, so I'm having to reference the chart a lot. And I randomly decided that this was going to be my road project. I've been knitting this in the car during our morning commute. It's been a little scary um, simply because the charts that I've picked so far do have twists in them. They, they have uh, single stitch cables and I don't use a cable needle. I do it, you know, the, slip it off and let it hang for a second and catch it. The yarn I'm using is a very, very toothy yarn which really helps. Um, see if I can find my tag. I am using, I'm gonna kill this name, Aracania? I, uh, it's the Ranko Solid Color 137, which I refer to as a denim blue. It's a little toothy. It is, um, they're saying 75% wool, 25% polyamide. They're not saying what kind of wool. My guess is it's not a merino. Um, this product is, let's see if I can find any decent information here for you. It comes from Chile. And it, it does not say what kind of wool it is. I don't know. I don't know. It is a sock yarn, nevertheless, uh, if only because it's got the nylon and a wool in it. It's toothy. It gives me the opportunity to do those uh, cables without too much difficulty. But when you're bouncing in the car and you're trying to cable and you're trying to read charts, it, it's, it's been an interesting challenge. Um, Again, I'm really liking the pattern. I find it exciting when I have a pattern that I work for so long and then it changes on me. And I, I never have the opportunity to get bored. Half the time I just barely catch on to what's going on and then it changes and okay. I think I'm going to knit both socks so that they match. Um, I'm kind of a matchy matchy person. One of the things about this particular pattern is that you may want to shift where your row begins in order to get things to align. In this particular choice selection that I've done so far, the center alignment of the cuff against the center alignment of the leg was off by one stitch, and that made me itchy. I just changed where my beginning around is. It's not gonna matter, it's a tube, folks. So I just shifted my round marker and called it good. And they're lining up beautifully. But I am, I, I have that perfectionist matchy-matchy kind of thing going on. So I think I'm going to make two identical socks. Which will give me the opportunity to use this pattern over and over and over again with multiple, multiple combinations. And it'll be great fun. If I had 12 skeins of this, I would probably just go ahead and start making them all random because it wouldn't matter. That's what I'm doing for the socks. And this is, at this point, my road project, sort of, we'll, we'll come back to that. I have also been working on a sweater. I told you I've been knitting like crazy. <laughs> my sweater, this pattern is Venetian Dream, it's by Josie Paquin. I have knit her, her patterns before. She's brilliant. I like her instruction. I like how uh, they fit. I like the construction. It is a seamless top down. Um, 
there's a little bit of picking up stitches, like in the underarm kind of a thing, but other than that, really, boom, one piece. This pattern's interesting in that it's a V-neck with a little bit of an open lower V, and it has lace on the cuffs and the hem. I'm going to just hold that up and try and get that to show you a little bit. And I picked up yarn on my epic trip when I was in Maine visiting my mom, and I started this sweater, and I have been pounding through this. I am loving it. Now mind you, it's stockinette, so you can make really good progress really fast, but it's fingering weight, so lots of little stitches. This is how far I've gotten. I am down below the V. I'm joined in the round. The sleeves are on holds, holding threads right now, and I am cruising, except that I've set this project aside to start the socks. This is kind of my after work night knitting. And of course, it gets set aside for when I'm inspired to do a sock block, uh, sock block, blanket, square. There we go. Yikes. Um, whenever I can look at the clock and I know I have an hour until bedtime, I usually dump whatever I'm doing and I grab the sock blanket and I knit a square because I know it takes me about an hour to knit a square and then I feel accomplished. I feel like I did something before I go to bed. Otherwise, if I've got a lot of time, I'm grabbing my sweater and I'm knitting like crazy in the round on that. Um, there, the sweater is an A-line, so after you divide for the arms and get into the body, every so many rows there is an increase. So I do have to pay a little bit of attention to that. But otherwise, just go. Great fun. Finally, the last project I've been knitting on, and I just started these yesterday. Um, I have tried repeatedly to make socks for my husband. And I've joked in the past about he has duck feet. <laughs> he, he has very narrow ankles. And although our foot length is very similar, his, his foot's like a half an inch longer than mine, the diagonal across the ankle, this measurement here, is larger than average. Um, and, and I've done the math. Kate Atherley has a wonderful book, Custom, Custom Socks. Let me grab the book. Some things I remember. Custom Socks by Kate Atherley. Uh, it's knit to fit your feet. And she has all the maths. All the maths. Um, she had done a massive survey. She'd asked a bunch of people to take measurements on their feet. She'd done this whole math study of what is the average foot, what is outside of average, how does that compare against the basic sock recipe that we all base sock designs on, and what changes do you need to make if your foot is narrower or if your foot is thicker. Um, I sat down, I measured feet like crazy, I did all her maths in here, and I figured out what needs to happen in order to make socks that fit my husband. Yay! Because I really would like to knit him a pair of socks, and I have been struggling with that. Um, I, I think you had seen my superhero socks. It was kind of a, a black, red, and blue, and I had put elastic in it. I was trying to tighten up the leg and do the rest of it bigger. They were too tight. It wasn't going to work. I think ultimately I pulled them out. I don't recall. I probably ought to look for that. Um, but... I didn't have a solution until I did the math. And so I have cast on socks for John, and I have knit like crazy on them. This was yesterday's progress. Wow. I am down into the heel flap, and for his particular foot size, I need to do an extended heel flap. At this point, I've only got, I've got about the average heel flap on. I need to do it about 25% longer, according to the math. And we're going to pick up the gusset, and get this back in the round, and then he is going to try these on, and we're going to see. Now this looks crazy, crazy, crazy skinny. I know you're looking at this and going, wow, he really does have skinny ankles. It's all ribbing. <laughs> it's all ribbing. For this particular project, I'm using the Regia 
Uh, the entire label is in a foreign language except for the words Welcome to the World of Inspiration and Like Us on Facebook. Um, I do see that it's 100 grams. I do see that it is 459 yards. And I see that the color is 07711, inspired. Uh, there's your label. I picked this up online at loveknitting.com. Let's see if I can get you a real good look at the actual knitted colors. This is a self-striping. It's really pretty. Oh, I really like the colors. I'm likely to buy more of this yarn just because I like the colors so much. It's an olive, it's a black, it's a gray, and it's kind of a charcoal. And it's striping. It's pretty. But, ha 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 ha, to do these, I opted to learn a new cast on. Um, generally, when I knit myself socks, I use a long tail cast on. And I know a lot of people get really uncomfortable with the long tail cast on because they've got to try and figure out where your starting point is. And I agree, that can be not fun. And that's why I often teach the infinity long tail cast on where you join two ends together and cast on from that point whether you're doing the felted join like I figured out last time thank you Melissa for inspiring that or whether you tie the lines together and end up with some extra tails to tie in um, I, I use that because it's a very very stretchy cast on the long tail cast on is However, I needed one that was uber stretchy. Um, for the top of this sock, I wanted to be absolutely sure that the reason that John's socks didn't fit this time was not going to be the cast on edge. I could have done toe up and done a loose bind off. I opted to do a really loose cast on and that really loose cast on uh, Again, was inspired by Kate Atherley when I was at the knit retreat. She taught us the Chinese waitress cast on. The Chinese waitress cast on has a really interesting, uh, what do I want to call this? Tail behind it. Um, you know, one of those inspiration moments where somebody was in a restaurant in, I think they said Bangkok, and the waitress taught her how to do this cast on. It is fiddly. It does take a little bit of extra work, but the stretch that comes off of it is significantly better than a long tail cast on. And it's a short tail cast on, which means you only have to leave the tail that you're going to weave in and you start from there and you cast on for as long as you need to, which is nice. Again, it's a little fiddly. I'm going to try and demonstrate it for you today. Yay! But first, I want to take a moment to really, really thank a friend of mine, Donna, Knitting with Attitude. I came home the other day after a kind of a rotten day at work, and there was a gift in the mail for me that was wholly unexpected. And I'm going to show you guys because it demonstrates her handiwork and her products, and it is fantastic fantastic she sent me this project bag it has her little tag on it it has star trek fabric on it and it is massive Matt, do you see the size of this project bag i love this i'm all about project bags that are big i like a deep bag I like a bra bag. I like to zip in there and be able to dive in and dig for whatever. And I like to carry multiple projects at the same time. She has more Star Trek fabric inside. Do you love this? It has a big, big pocket on one side. It has a divided two pockets on the other side. It is deep and one, I could live in this. I could live in this. I'm very excited about this. Uh, if I'm guessing she probably made sure that it was big enough for my <laughs> how to eat an elephant blanket to fit in there so that I could take it with me if I so desired. It's that big. It's definitely sweater size. It's definitely large project size. 
it is definitely, I could carry a couple of sock projects with me, a cowl with me, whatever I wanted. It even has a little fob here for your accessories, whether it's stitch markers, progress markers, keychain, whatever. And a handle. I love this thing. Donna, look, she even has a little progress keeper, the little sheepy progress keeper on the, on the zipper fob. Donna, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I haven't used it yet, as you can tell. I wanted it to be all nice and pristine so I could show everybody how beautiful this is. I This, this really made my day. This meant the world to me. Thank you. Um, and now I can put all my projects in it and it can get covered with lovey dog hair and I can be all happy and I won't be all embarrassed showing people it covered with dog hair. That's awful. I'm sorry. It will not be covered with dog hair. It will be tucked away safely in my studio where the dogs only come in to alert me that it's time for them to go out. Shifting on, let's go and let's take a look at that uh, Chinese waitress cast on. Okay, Chinese waitress cast on. I'm going to use two different color needles so that you can see the needle position because needle position is very important in this. And I'm using a contrast yarn. I'm hoping that this color combination will make it very easy for you to see what's going on. First thing you do is create a slip knot, leaving a tail, and again, short tail. And you put that on your left hand needle. Then you take your right hand needle, you put it over the working yarn and under the, right hand, the left hand needle. <laughs> Your working yarn comes over, around, and you draw it through. This is your first stitch, and your first stitch is going to get handled differently than all the rest. This is just an establishment. At this point, you're going to pinch right here. You're going to slip your needle out. You're going to put your needle back in in the opposite direction and twist it behind. Again, the yarn is coming from behind. Your right hand needle is underneath and your left hand needle is on top. You go over the left hand needle, around the right hand needle, and draw it through. There are now two stitches on the right hand needle. I'm going to lift the first stitch over and off the second stitch. I'm going to pinch, take my needle out, put my needle back in in the opposite direction, and reestablish my position. This is your working position going across. Again, the yarn goes over the left hand needle, around the right hand needle, and comes through. From this point forward, you're always going to have two stitches resulting on the right hand needle. Let me draw out some more yarn so I can keep showing you what's going on here. Again, we're going to lift the first stitch over and off the second so that just one stitch remains. We're going to pinch. We're going to take the needle out. We're going to put the needle back in in the opposite direction and put it back in that starting position. I'm going to keep doing this until I have the number of stitches I need on my left hand needle. When I have as many as I need on my left hand needle, plus including this one on the right hand needle, I will simply slip this one up and on and count that as my hole. Let's begin from the beginning again so you can see the whole process from the beginning again. I have created a slip knot. Let's do it all the way here. Create a slip knot, put it on your left hand needle. Take your right hand needle, put it in front of your working needle and behind your left hand needle. Bring your yarn over the left hand needle, around the right hand needle just like you would if you were knitting, and draw it through. This is your establishment. Pinch, take your needle out, put your needle back in in the opposite direction, and you are set up again to continue. Over the left, 
around the right, draw through. Now this behavior is the behavior you're going to repeat until you have as many cast on as you need. Lift the first stitch over and off the second stitch on the right hand needle. Pinch your work, take your needle out, put it back in in the opposite direction, and you are set up to continue. I'm just going to go ahead and cast a bunch on now so that you can see the action. Over, around, through, over and off, pinch, reverse, begin again. Over, around, through, over and off, pinch, put back through, begin again. Over, around, through, over and off, pinch, put back through, over, around, and through, over and off, whoop, I got it stuck, pinch, back through. This does look fiddly, however, it is a fully reversible cast on, which means it looks exactly the same on this side as it does on this side. It doesn't matter which side you have out, it's going to look exactly the same. And it creates this really pretty chain right along the top edge of your work. One more time, over, around, through, over and off, pinch, reverse. I have eight stitches on my left hand needle, I have one stitch on my right hand needle. I have a total of nine stitches cast on. If I were done casting on, if I needed nine stitches cast on, I would simply slip that last stitch on. That is the Chinese Waitress cast on. It is super, super stretchy, like I said, and has that nice, neat chain right along. If you do not like the look of the slip knot at the beginning, you can not knit that one and not count that in your cast on. Just count on those and then undo this when you're done. I hope that tutorial is assistive to you. I hope that you give it a try. Uh, like I said, it is even stretchier than the long tail cast on and a little bit easier to do if you're not up for estimating your tail as well as just kind of fun. It's different and stretchy. We like this. And that's that. That's my least professional tutorial ever. Um, really, it looks fiddly. It's not. Once you get used to the action of it, it it's kind of fun. I, I like the steps of it. And yeah, if it's, if it's looking complicated to you and you're like, why would I do that? I'll just cast on. Consider that, like I said, it's super, super stretchy. And the best projects are the ones that are started the best way possible. And that little extra effort at the cast on may make all the difference in the end product. That's it. I have knitting I want to go do. And I think I'm going to make some holiday cookies. I will see you all guys next time. Have a great week. Go knit something. Go try something new. Bye.